All the hip skincare vloggers have been talking about SPF moisturizer these days. It's the thing to have, promising to be a no-hassle way to get that extra sun-protecting health boost. There is some intuitive sense to adding this into your skincare routine, but you don't really need it. In fact, these products could actually damage your health when they're meant to protect it. Before we get started, I just wanna take a moment to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been watching these videos. The love and engagement honestly means so much. And I also wanted to remind everyone that we're really just here to ask questions, present the info that's currently out there and start conversations. If you take a close look at our logo, you can see that it's literally a conversation bubble. We did that on purpose and we'd love to have you be a part of the conversation. The world of health products and ideas can be a messy one. The idea here is to organize organize some of the mess and help all of us make some more informed choices. Now I know there's a lot of debate on the details of the matter, but I think we can pretty much all agree that at least some level of sun protection is a good thing. At the very least, no one wants to deal with burnt skin or sunstroke. Now look, I'm gonna put a little of this aloe on your back, okay? It should make you feel better. And we've all heard the link between sun exposure and skin cancer. But it turns out that even if you don't burn, the sun can still damage your skin without you even noticing it until it's too late. When it comes to sun exposure, the big concern is two different types of ultraviolet rays, UVA and UVB. Together, these rays can do subtle things like damage your DNA, suppress your immune system, and break down important proteins like collagen in your dermis. You know, that stuff that supports your skin's structure, keeping it young, elastic, and smooth, which is why people who don't protect themselves adequately may experience early wrinkles and leathery skin. Enter sunscreen, designed to block and absorb UV rays. It's one of those things that every dermatologist seems to recommend, but some recommend it to a degree that I would not have expected. Apparently, UVA rays can get in through the windows and even the two minute walk to your car counts as sun exposure. So I guess we're supposed to wear sunscreen even if we barely set foot outside. Oh, and that counts for winter too, which just seems kind of crazy to me. Now, I'm not a dermatologist myself. I'm definitely not here to tell you how often you should wear sunscreen. But I think it's worth noting that the sun does a lot for and to us, including helping us make vitamin D, which by the way, helps prevent skin and other cancers. This is why we're encouraged to get 20-ish minutes of unblocked sun exposure daily. So there's some kind of balancing act that needs to happen here. But the reality is there are many experts who will tell you to wear sunscreen every single day of the year, rain or shine, no matter what your skin tone or how easily you burn. Did we hear that right? Every single day, rain or shine, regardless of skin tone? The problem here is that everyone hates sunscreen, but we all use moisturizer. So like, why not put the two together? I totally get this and have used SPF moisturizers and makeup foundation with SPF protection in the past. We get to feel like we're taking care of our health while putting zero extra effort into our routine. It seems like an obvious win, except that it doesn't precisely work that way. Not ideal. It's true that SPF moisturizer has the potential to be just as effective as straight up sunscreen, but potential and actuality are two very different things. And the thing is, we use moisturizer in a totally different way than we use sunscreen. Sunscreen, we're supposed to apply about every two hours throughout the day. Moisturizer, we put on when we wake up and then move on. Studies indicate that people who use SPF moisturizer instead of sunscreen miss more of their face, including vulnerable areas like the eyelids. And don't don't apply enough to adequately protect the skin they do cover. It doesn't help that these moisturizers can be quite expensive, so people aren't exactly motivated to slather it on like they would a drugstore sunscreen. So people aren't exactly motivated to slather it on like they would a drugstore sunscreen. That's, that's next level, you know? Eye cream, eye cream is, is, is serious because eye cream costs more. So basically, SPF moisturizers tend to just make you feel more protected when you may not be. A false sense of security can encourage people to stay in the sun longer than they would otherwise, and maybe not care so much about bringing that wide-brimmed hat along. I know it seems counterintuitive, but if you use SPF moisturizer, you 
may be setting yourself up for worse skin damage down the road, at least if it means you're forgetting to reapply. If you're aware of this, SPF moisturizer is gonna be better than nothing. Many still recommend applying these products separately, and at the very least, awareness around how you're applying and how often you're applying is going to make a big difference. The problem with SPF is that everyone knows it's important, but not everyone understands it. So companies can slap an SPF label onto moisturizer, BB cream, lip balm, you name it, and people will buy it at a premium without having a hot clue what it's actually doing. And as we've seen, it might not be doing much. But here's the thing, straight up sunscreen is just about as questionable as all these other products. Who remembers the details of how SPF works? I'm willing to bet a bunch of us have pretty hazy info. So here's a quick overview. SPF stands for sun protection factor, and it refers to how well a product blocks UVB rays. An SPF of 30 means that you could be out in the sun 30 times longer before you get a sunburn than if you had no sunscreen. Assuming, of course, that you're reapplying it every couple hours like you're supposed to, that's a constant no matter what the SPF. Note that an SPF of 30 is not twice as potent as an SPF of 15. In fact, it only filters out about 4% more UVB rays. And SPF 50 is only 1% better at blocking rays than 30. Math is hard. A good chunk of people buy sunscreen specifically for the high SPF, but honestly, it doesn't make much of a difference past 30. Although some will recommend just going as high as possible because why not? We suck at applying sunscreen, so that little boost might help. Anything more than 50 is probably unnecessary for most of us and could just fool you into thinking that you don't need to be as careful. There's another super key thing here to note. SPF only refers to UVB rays. Remember, there are two types of rays we're concerned about. UVA doesn't contribute as much to sunburn, but it penetrates deeper in the skin, has more influence in the collagen, and unlike UVB, isn't absorbed by ozone. It's not something you want to forget, but if your sunscreen bottle doesn't say broad spectrum on it, you're missing a huge part of the sun care equation. Unfortunately, even if you know your SPF facts, that won't be enough to discern a good product. The Environmental Working Group has scientists regularly testing what's out on the market, and every year they publish a sunscreen guide based on this data. I don't wanna depress you too much, but their findings are not very comforting. Like apparently on average in 2021, American sunscreens reduced the ultraviolet exposure by only half of what would be expected. Only one third of these products could pass EU standards of sun protection. And that's not even getting into the industry's rocky history with issues like cancer causing chemicals. You know, in the product that we're using specifically to avoid things like cancer. Not to mention all the concerns around our precious coral reef. Reef safe is another important topic that we just don't have time to get into in this video. All of this to say, the world of sunscreen is hella complicated. And I feel like many of us are still navigating what to do when it comes to choosing a product that's going to protect rather than harm us. I'm also kind of in that boat to be honest, and I feel like combining sunscreen with other products might just complicate things further. I personally don't really want to deal with all of that and would rather just stick to the dermatologist's recommendation to keep the products separate. We can't possibly get into all the little details of sun protection in this video, but here are a few things to keep in mind when choosing a product. First off, look for a sunscreen that's broad spectrum and somewhere in the SPF 30 to 50 range. Some experts recommend sticking to a mineral sunscreen as an extra precaution against chemicals that we don't fully understand and that may have negative side effects. Mineral sunscreen sits on the surface of the skin and reflects UV rays, whereas chemical sunscreen is absorbed absorbed into the skin itself where it disarms harmful rays via chemical reactions. The thing about chemical sunscreen is that the active ingredients can get into the blood itself, and we just don't know yet whether or not that's super safe. Mineral sunscreens can be harder to apply and tend to leave a bit of white film on your skin, but they are as a class probably going to be safer, not to mention better for sensitive skin. They're not for everyone, but worth considering. Regardless of what you choose, an awareness of how much sun exposure you're getting and how you're protecting yourself is going to be key. And of course, sunscreen is far from the be all end all of sun protection. Wear sunglasses, hats, and find some shade. Hats but don't forget to get some sun exposure in. 20 minutes a day can go a long way for your overall health. And if you like this video, we have a lot more like it coming up. So remember to like and subscribe. Your support goes a long way in keeping us going. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being part of the family.
thank you from the bottom of my heart. There I go again.